what's up YouTube? Today I'll be doing an unboxing, overview and review of the JBL Go To speaker. Let's get into the unboxing. The unboxing of this device is pretty straightforward and simple. Although I was tempted to use my knife at first, a simple pull of the tape on top was enough to open up the box. We can go ahead and pull the speaker out from the box. And there it is, the JBL GO 2. We can see that under the rubber flap, on the right side of the speaker, is the first thing to disappoint me, a micro USB and not USB-C port. However, I do have to mention that on the JBL GO 3, JBL finally put a USB-C into the speaker. We can also see the 3.5mm headphone jack in case you want to connect your phone or device through a headphone cable rather than through Bluetooth. Back to the packaging, we can see that there is a white box that was below the speaker. In the white box, we have a look at the very interesting way that JBL had chosen to package the accessories and paperwork of the speaker. You can see the micro USB to USB A cable wrapped up like a burrito using the paperwork. There is no headphone cable included in the box. That is about it for the unboxing, and here is an image of all the parts laid out together. So, let's get into the overview of the speaker. The JBL GO 2 is one of JBL's most portable speakers. Like many of their speakers, the JBL GO 2 boasts an IPX7 water resistance, which means that it is roughly as water resistant as your phone. It should survive a drop into the swimming pool if you do happen to accidentally drop your speaker in. I would however recommend keeping this speaker away from salt water as salt water can corrode components on the inside if it does somehow enter your speaker. The speaker has an advertised up to 5 hour of music playback with its internal 730mAh battery. A speakerphone or microphone is included in this speaker, which is interesting, and it weighs just 180 grams, which is really light. Also just an FYI, it uses Bluetooth 4.1 if uh, you want to know. Lastly, the speaker retails for 6990 SGD in Singapore, or 52 USD. The retail price for this speaker in the US is $39.95 USD or about $53.50 SGD. Okay, so moving to the review. I'm going to be talking about three main things. Sound, battery life, and microphone. So in terms of sound, how do they sound? Well, to put it simply, they sound unmistakably like JBL. What do I mean by that? Well, they focus primarily on the lows, uh, basically they try to make the bass as pronounced as possible while not focusing so much on the mids and highs. Well, that is very typical of JBL speakers across the board. I personally am not a fan of this approach to sound as I prefer a more balanced sound profile. But I completely understand why JBL focus on a boosted bass profile for their portable speakers. And that is probably because of the fact that these speakers are meant to be brought around to parties dance meetings or small functions. And typically songs played at pool parties, dance meetings or sports games tend to have more bass and more drum instruments in them such as pop songs or rock songs or EDM which then makes sense as to why this speaker sounds like it's tuned to those kind of music. It is also a generally well-known fact that people tend to prefer having a deeper bass even if it means getting a bit muddy on speakers than having a more pronounced highs or even mids. So to me personally, this speaker doesn't exactly sound great. But they achieve what they set out to do. And I have to admit, the sound is pretty impressive for a speaker of this size. Especially if the sound is what JBL was hoping to achieve. The loudness to body ratio of this speaker is also really good. They do get a bit distorted when reaching max volume, but that's pretty common with many speakers anyway. Here are some sound samples between the JBL GO 2 my Logitech external speakers, and my MacBook Pro 13-inch 4 Thunderbolt model from 2016. 
So, how's the battery life? Well, it's kind of a mixed one for me. It definitely didn't go that 5 hours of music playtime that was advertised, and I think that's because of the volume of which you play the music at. Naturally, the louder you play the music on your speakers, the faster it's going to drain the battery. The softer you play the music, the longer the battery is going to last. I have a feeling that using Bluetooth to connect your speaker to your device also has a part to play in how fast the battery drains, instead of using a 3.5mm jack cable from your phone or device to the speaker. I didn't try this out but I believe that if you played music through a wired connection, the battery would have probably drained slower. Overall though, the battery did last a pretty decent amount of time, about 4 hours, 4 hours plus, before I decided to charge it again and I don't think you'll be disappointed with the battery life so long as you remember to charge it every time you get home from using it outside the whole day. Now for the microphone. This is an example of how the microphone on the JBL GO 2 sounds like. It's pretty muffled and it isn't good. I wouldn't recommend using it. Uh, just use a phone if you're having a phone call. So as you heard, the microphone quality was pretty mediocre and I wouldn't recommend using them unless you were close to your speakers or your phone was really far away. There are other things I'd like to mention about this speaker such as the portability of it. Now we all know that the Go 2 is really small. What I didn't expect is the fact that it can actually fit in my pocket, which is really cool. Lastly, I do want to give a mention to the water resistance of this speaker. I tested it once and it works, but I still wouldn't intentionally submerge them in water like I'm doing right here. I would treat them more as an added layer of protection, but not so much as a true feature of the speakers that you should really utilize. With all that said, what is my conclusion of the JBL GO 2? The JBL GO 2 is a great speaker for its size and purpose. Its purpose being bringing it to places where you would normally want to bring speakers but just couldn't because of the size and durability limitations, such as a pool or beach but away from seawater and if you are tight on space and weight. This speaker is a really good if not a little pricey option here in Singapore. In fact, if you are an NS like me, then this would be the quintessential speaker for you to use while you are showering in camp. So that's been it. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, do give it a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comment section what you'd like to see next and how I can continue to improve my YouTube videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.